Well, our quest for big fish continues and brings us here to Langdegford Reservoir in Wales. It's home, of course, to the Record Pike. It's a very famous reservoir, and it's a place where ordinarily people go trout fishing, but we've been given a special opportunity, and that opportunity is to fish for the coarse fish in this lake. Now, that's never been done before. We know the place is packed with coarse fish. There's roach and dace and bream, perch and chub, but no one's ever wet a line for them, and we're going to be the first to do it. So it's a very, very exciting opportunity. However, as you can see, this is a big place. We've got over 400 acres of water here, and we've got to find the fish. So me and Mick, being the chaps that we are, have come up with a bit of a master plan, haven't we, Michael? Yes, we have indeed, Matt. As pike anglers, you see, we're at quite an advantage because we're used to fishing big waters for a start like this, and in our search for big pike, we're actually tracking down the shoals of prey fish, and we're using a fish finder, or echo sounder, as they're sometimes known, to pick up these shoals of prey because we know that the pike will be nearby. In this instance, it's not the pike we're after, it's the prey. And when we have found them, we're going to drop a marker like this to mark the position where we want to cast to, and we're going to put down a carpet of bait just to try and draw fish into the area and get them feeding upon it, and just sit back and see what happens. We've got no idea what's in this reservoir. It's going to be great fun finding out, I can tell you. Oh, look at this spot in, Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good shoal. Yeah, hang on, I'll go a little bit deeper. Oh, look at that. Look at oh, that. that's a huge shoal there. Remember where we are, just down from that pole on the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So, roach and bream, we've got two records to talk about. Bream at 18 pounds, eight ounces, caught from Borborough Pit. And also the roach record, a long-standing one actually, a fish from the Dorset Stour at four pound, three ounces. Now, I'm here at the Natural History Museum in London with Nigel Hewlett. Nigel works for the Environment Agency and the British Record Fish Committee, which makes him ideally qualified to comment on the subject of hybridization. Roach and bream do hybridize, but first of all, Nigel, what is a hybrid? Hybrid. A hybrid mat is a mix of two species. The male fish, for example, could have been a roach, the female a bream, or the other way around. And so result... what, what you've got is a cross between the two? Absolutely. And yes. is it just roach and bream? Uh, no, no. Lots of species can hybridise. It's very common. It occurs naturally. One of my main roles on the British Rod Court Fish Committee is to look at the uh, examples we get in and see if they are actually genuine examples of a species, whether there is a possibility of some hybridisation. They're not always that easy to spot. Now, the interesting thing here is that Mick and I are going to fish Langdegford Reservoir in Wales, where they've got both roach and bream. So the possibility is we might catch a really big roach, but on the other hand, we might catch a really big bream, or we might just catch a great big hybrid. Only time will tell. We're out in 20 foot now, and there's lots of fish. Lots okay. of fish. Well, let's, I think that's about as far as we can cast, so shall I put yeah. the anchor in? OK. It's about 19 and a half to 20 feet here, Matt. I think that's fine. OK, mate. Right. The anchor's okay. down, but you might let, need to let the boat swing into the yeah, wind. Yeah, OK. Let's get the marker down. Uh, we've got the bait here. Um, this is the ground bait mix that we're going to put in. This is plain, simple brown crumb. That's all it is. You can buy it in any tackle shop, and we've got some sweet corn in there. So we're going to put a carpet of ground bait down around the marker, the idea being to cast from the bank over that carpet with swim feeders. And then we've got a load of old maggots and casters that we've bought from the tackle shop for a knockdown price. It's not top quality bait, this, but it'll certainly do for what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do now is we've already identified that with the wind pushing down this end of the reservoir, it's got to be a good area to find fish because that will be setting up an undertow. Basically, the water under the surface will be moving and disturbing the bottom, so fish should be down this end feeding. And then later on, as Mick said, we'll come back to the bank using the boat, put our stuff on the bank, and we'll swim feed a fish over the bait that we've put in. It's a good plan. Let's just hope it works. I'll let you bait up, mate. I'll let you do it. Yeah. See, this should settle on the bottom of the carpet, mate. Now for the maggots. Spread them out, boy. It's a feast, Mick. It is, isn't it? Well, here we are. It's a little bit windy down on this shore, but that might not be a bad thing because a lot of the fish in this reservoir will 
feed at the windward end of the lake because the, the water tends to get disturbed there and that stirs the food up into suspension. What sort of fish might we catch? Well, we don't know really. This reservoir is fed by the River Usk and that contains a good variety of fish. So anything that swims in the Usk could be fair game here. We're thinking maybe roach, possibly some big roach. We know there are bream in the reservoir in quite large numbers. Um, perch and certainly some very big dace because the usk is quite famous for its dace and we know that they found their way into the reservoir here so what we're doing is adopting a general approach that might produce a good fish of any of those species and there's no point in making things more complicated than they need to be um, these fish have never seen bait before we're the first people to be given the opportunity to do this so we've adopted for a simple swim feeder ground bait and maggot approach and uh, hopefully we'll just see what, what comes along, if anything. Now I've no idea what this is, it's not particularly big. Probably some sort of silver fish I would imagine. But it's a bite and it's a fish, so that's good. Oh, it's a perch. It's not a big perch, but uh, I would imagine there are some big perch in this reservoir. Look at that, it's a really pristine looking fish though. That's his spiny dorsal fin. Absolutely perfect. I would imagine the perch in this lake must uh, certainly go over two pounds, three pounds. You honestly don't know on a water like this, there could be record fish in here. I'm sure there are. This is what we call an open-ended swim feeder. And that's because, strangely enough, it's open at both ends. Now, this kind of feeder is perfect for still water fishing or for slow moving rivers. To fill the uh, open-ended feeder, you want some fairly dry ground bait. You want it to be damp, not too wet and sticky, just like this. This is a nice, fine textured ground bait. So start off by taking some ground bait and push your feeder onto your hand, pressing down with your finger to create the bottom plug. And then take your bait, whether it's sweet corn or hemp or maggots or whatever, tip that in. And then on the top, again, another handful of ground bait. Use your thumb to compress it. So I'm squeezing between finger and thumb to create the ground bait sandwich. I'm using three maggots on the hook, size 14 hook, four pounds line. These fish will never have been hooked before, so they're not gonna be hook or line shy. So a good sized bait like that should uh, attract a bit of attention. And a feeder filled like this will cast a long way and 30 or 40 yards, even in a headwind, is no problem. Now, as I said, the idea is to allow the feeder to sink to the bottom, and then just twitch it back a few feet. Just wind up the slack line, twitch the feeder so it empties its contents. Oh, that's a bite straight away. I didn't even need to wait there. Twitch the feeder so it empties its contents, and your hook bait will be sitting in that ground bait. But the fish have obviously really got going down here now, and they're not even waiting for the feeder to empty. It's a typical thing with shoal fish like this that have never been fished for. Well, it looks a good fish. It's a bream, I think. Now, I think, actually, I think this is a big roach bream hybrid, a massive one. Sometimes, when you get certain species of fish in the water together, they spawn in the same areas and they cross-breed. And I'll get Mick to come and have a look at this because it'd be worth getting a second opinion. Mick? I saw your rod bending, Matt. What are you got? Well, I thought it was a bream at first, Mick, but it fought hard. Yeah. And I think it's a hybrid. It, it looks like a cross between a roach and a bream, doesn't it? Yeah, it's certainly got a lot of roach characteristics. Look yeah, at... it's not a pure bream, mate. No, no. But it's no. a big fish. I bet you it's six pound, actually. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at... I think you can safely call that a hybrid. Hybrids actually don't get much bigger than this. There is no official record for them, actually. But a lot of people fish for them in Ireland because they're renowned for their fighting qualities. I mean, it's a good fish, Mick. That's, yeah, that's it over is, yeah. five, probably yeah. six pounds, that yeah. is. Yeah. Well. This is a personal best for me. It might not break any national records because there isn't a record for it, but I've never had a roach bream hybrid as big as this. This is a big one. 
So it's a specimen fish brownie. Yeah. Whichever yeah. way you look at it, boy. Yeah, it certainly is. Good strong fish. What a great start. Yeah. Small perch and then one of these. Yeah. What else is out there? Yeah. You just don't know, do you? It could no. be anything. I know. It could be a blue marlin. <laughs> Got it. Well, this one's not as heavy as the other fish. It's really difficult to see the bites here because we've got a big side wind now. It's putting a big bow in the line when we're casting and you just lose contact with the end tackle, you know. Now, I think this one's a roach. It is. So that's three species in three casts. This fish is very different to the hybrid that we just caught. It's much more silvery. It's got orangey red fins. And I would guess that this one is a true roach. It's probably about 12 ounces. That's a nice roach. The roach record, of all the records on the books, is probably the toughest one of the lot to beat because a lot of big roach used to be caught on the rivers. They've largely disappeared due to habitat changes. So if the roach record is going to go, my own guess it will be either from a place like this one, a large reservoir, or from a gravel pit, but certainly a big still water. The problem here, of course, is that we know that the fish hybridise, because I caught a hybrid earlier on, so unless you actually test a fish's scales or its DNA or whatever, you can't actually tell whether it's a 100% genuine roach. Most anglers wouldn't be prepared to kill a fish just to find that out, but I could imagine that on a place like this, if someone tried to claim a record roach, there may be some controversy because of the hybridisation issue, but that one looked genuine enough to me, all right. Well, it's interesting the way this reservoir is formed because, I mean, at one time, this was buildings, yeah. Woodland, probably roads. Yeah. And apparently they just literally scraped the lot out. It took yeah. them three years to do it yeah. in the 60s. Yeah. And they allowed it to fill naturally. At the dam end, it's 120 feet deep. Is it? Yeah. And it gradually gets shallower to this end as yeah. the river comes in here. Yeah. So the water filled up. Yeah. And that's how they created it. So, you know, there was probably someone's house out there at one yeah. point. And yeah. Getting worse, isn't it, Mick? Yeah. It's a monstrous hybrid. It's a point of interest with these hybrids. There is no British record for them, but there is an Irish record, and I think it's somewhere over seven pounds, which we've got pretty close to here. But there is no record in England. There's a lot of people calling for a record now because they are such hard fighting fish, although they're crossbred. Roach bream hybrid, clonker. There it is, four pound, 12 ounces. I wouldn't get a bigger one than that. <laughs> well, you certainly get a proper fight off these hybrids. There you are, look at that. Another big hybrid, four and a half, five pounds. It's certainly the biggest hybrid I've ever caught, and I'll tell you what, if you had half a dozen of these in a day, you'd really know about it. Would I? Yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. Another big, fast hybrid. Oh, wow. Lazy. Now, check this fish out. It may not be the biggest fish we've caught today, but this is a real specimen. This is a dace. They're very unusual in still water. This is actually a fish traditionally found in fast flowing water and of course, it, probably its ancestors would have started life in the River Usk. But they're here in numbers in Inland Dagfed Reservoir and they grow to pretty impressive sizes. The dace record is not that much over a pound actually, to give you an idea, and this fish is probably about 10 ounces. And that's a big dace, really big dace. I'm just catching fish after fish here, it really is good fun. I'm mainly catching roach, the occasional hybrid, this looks like a proper roach. Oh, yes, yeah, a nice one. Well, as you can see, it's getting rather like beach fishing here. It looks like the tide's coming in the way the waves are lapping here. 
Well, it is a lovely road. We're getting some great roads here. Well, I've just switched over to a worm, on the hook that is, to uh, try and get something bigger, but it hasn't really worked. I've got a reasonable fish on, but it's not, uh, it's not a big bream or anything. Whoa, steady on there, boy. Oh, now that, that actually is a proper bream. It's not a big one. It's what we call a skimmer bream. You see how flat the fish is, how thin in cross section it is. It's just like a skimming stone. And that's why they're called skimmer bream when they're young. This fish would probably be just a couple of years old. Probably weighs about 12 ounces, I suppose, maybe a pound. And a fish like this, in this environment, could potentially reach weights of 14 or even 15 pounds. It's quite amazing. Well, the wind's picking up now. It's making the fishing really awkward. But the fish are there in numbers and we're catching very regularly. Of a tip for you there. If you fish with the tail end of a worm, always hook it towards the broken end. That's where the body juices leak out into the water, and uh, fish often attack that part first. You might be interested just to see the mix we're using. It's basically 70% ordinary brown crumb ground bait, and then about 30 to 40% of this ground bait called Expo. Because this ground bait is sweet, and most fish have got a sweet tooth, it really works well. Well, this is turning out to be a really good fishing session. Fantastic. Well, this has suddenly gone very solid. Ah, oh, he's let go of it. The pike just literally Came in out of nowhere, I think, and growl. We may have it again. It's suddenly gone really heavy. Yeah, there's the pike. You grabbed the fish that I was reeling in. Look, there he is. He's got it right across his jaws. Look at that. Oh, he's let go. Ooh. And he's still coming in for it. Look at him. Wow. Well, that, that roach had a very lucky escape there. As a pike grabbed that, it's yeah. damaged the fish slightly, but nothing terminal. He'll be OK, thankfully. I managed to crank him out of the way in time. But he's had a very narrow escape, haven't you? It's just crazy now. Getting bites every cast. Got a bit of bait out there, but it's not lasting five minutes. There's a real stack of fish waiting down there for it to land. Well, the wind's certainly getting up, but the fish are feeding. Another roach here. Everything's coming on worm hook baits now. It's proved to be a really successful switch. Since I changed over to worm about 20 minutes ago, I've had five roach on it. But I've persevered with it, and I've got a better fish. Just look at that for a roach. It just gets better and better, doesn't it? This is a bit of a, a dull kind of dragging fight. And I thought at first it's probably one of those hybrids, but it's not fighting like one yet. And I wonder whether it's a proper bream. The fishing has got better and better. As the bait's been going in, oh, it's a fair old fish. I think it's a proper bream. It looks like a good one. As I was saying, when you build up the swim like this, you often start with small fish and then the sport gets better. And this is a nice one, actually. It's very difficult in this shallow water, but look at that. Big old kipper. Yes! Well, that's a nice fish. Got a good bream here, Mick. That's a good one, isn't it? You can see the difference between the bream and the hybrid. It's much more bronze in colour. Great big slab of a fish. It's very difficult to get hold of. 
very slimy fish, the bream, but look at that. I think we should probably weigh this, Mick. I think it's certainly over eight pounds, could be, could be over nine. Well, that switch to worms certainly paid off, didn't it? That's exactly what I was after, one of the big bream here. And I've got one. I'll bring the sling to you, mate. OK. Actually, I'm glad I bought this big sling. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, that feels well, all right, that's over eight pounds, Mick. Might be bigger than that. OK, mate. Yep. What do you reckon, Brownie? I'll be pleased with that. It's just nine pounds. Yeah, just over nine, isn't just it? Just over nine. Very, nice very good. Nice bream. That's a good one. Yeah, it's a beauty. It's a good one from anywhere. Yeah. Well, the bream record nice currently me. is uh, upper double figures, so they're getting bigger and bigger as time goes by. But that's a good one. That's a specimen fish. You'd be pleased to catch that anywhere. You can see the difference between this adult bream and the skimmer bream we saw earlier on. The skimmer bream is very silvery, very thin across its back. This fish is deep as well, but it's much thicker across its back, across the shoulders. Real chunky fish, almost as deep as it is long, almost purple fins, a bronze pewter coloration on its body, hence the name bronze bream. You can tell it's a bream by the length here of this extended anal fin. It's very, very long. And that is a classic bream. Perfect proportions, well fed, a beauty. Right, well, I'm gonna have to walk this one out a little bit because the water's so shallow here, and this bream's deeper than the water in the margins. So I'm probably gonna get wet feet, but uh, it's well worth it for a fish of this caliber. Look at that, right old slab. Slabber dabber do. Go and tell your mates. Go and find me one about two pound bigger. Thank you. Well, we're here on the River Thames. We're not too far from Henley, you know. Uh, but it's a particularly nice bit of river here. We've come here for perch, and the record currently is well over five pounds, so that's a very, very big fish. And of course, we don't expect to catch something of that size, but on the Thames, mm. anything's possible. The whole of the river is very underfished for perch, so this is real pioneering stuff and actually quite exciting, Michael. It certainly is, yeah. And uh, I mean, even a three pound perch, well below the record, is a fantastic fish. Yeah, it is. There's some nice features across on that wall over there. It looks a good spot, actually. Yeah. Because they like structure, they like brickwork. Yeah, and also they like when there's plenty of uh, bleak around, and I know there's lots of bleak in this area, I've seen them topping. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's a great time of year for perch, isn't it? Wonderful. You know, the leaves are turning and it's getting a bit colder. With any luck, Mick. Yeah, well, let's give it a try. Online. Yeah, well, we have been known to be lucky in the past, Matt, so... Hi. I'm feeling quite confident here. Yes, I think you're in a pact with the devil at the moment, mate, <laughs> but we won't go into that. No. <laughs> no, I really fancy this. It's yeah, uh, a beautiful bit of water, isn't it? Great perch bait. This wind's a pain, actually. Well, the late, great Richard Walker said that a big perch is the biggest fish of all. And when young Dean Rawlings went along to his local pond and caught an absolute whopper, it turned the specimen fishing world upside down. Isn't that wonderful? I'm here at the Natural History Museum in London, and I've got with me Nigel Hewlett, who works for the Environment Agency and for the British Rod Court Fish Committee. What a fantastic thing to have happened. Oh, isn't it just, Matt? You've got a very small water, a comparatively small water, lots of fish in it, and along comes this young man and catches a record perch. Yeah, 11 years old. And, you know, the interesting thing is, Nigel, in these days when everybody's targeting these fish and it's all so scientific, he wasn't, was he? No, not at all. He was just a, an everyday angler going along. But it does show the one thing that big perch actually need, and that is lots of food, lots of small fish to eat, and that's the key with perch. And you know what's great about this for me is that young Dean struck a blow for the happy splodger, and that's exactly what me and Mick Brown are, you know. Now, we could go to a commercial fishery for our record perch, but you know, we're not going to. We're actually gonna to go to a river, and uh, a river with a very, very good track record for the species. Well, I've decided to start off on the feeder, chucking it across to that brick wall on the far side. I think that's a perch magnet. They love structure, particularly man-made covering the forms of brick walls and culverts. 
The perfect way to tackle them is on the feeder. It's a blooming long chuck on a float. The rod I'm using is quite sensitive, actually. It's a fairly soft action rod. It's got a very sensitive quiver tip. And if you're going to quiver tip for perch, use the softest tip that you can get away with in the conditions because they are very sensitive to bite resistance. If there's any stiffness in the rod, they'll feel that and drop the bait. Bait-wise, really simple, actually. I'm using red maggots. Red appears to be a trigger colour for perch. Anyone that's done any spinning for them will realise that if you put a little bit of red wool on the back of your hook, it often brings bites. And my favourite maggot colour is red. They seem to love it. The swim feeder setup's really simple. I've just got the feeder running on a loop here. It's a fairly light feeder, um, quite a sensitive setup. You fill the feeder up with maggots, and when the feeder hits the bottom, the maggots crawl out and it leaves a nice carpet of bait around your hook bait, so it's a very accurate way of fishing. I've got a couple of red maggots on the hook, and I've started quite well. I'm getting bites really from the off. It's a bit awkward because it's very windy and that's putting a bow in the line, so it's making the bites a little bit difficult to spot at times, but they're coming thick and fast. Small perch at the moment, but it's not hard to imagine a big shoal of fish over there. Lots of small fish, on the edges maybe, the odd pounder, two pounder, and then skulking around in the shadows at the back. Maybe that big old girl's just sitting there, eyeing up the smaller perch for a potential meal. Certainly hope so. If this doesn't work, then we've got other options. Maybe the waggler, just spraying maggots and float fishing in the river. We could even try some lure fishing, covering a lot of water, spinners, jigs, plugs. There's a hell of a lot of water to go at here, so I'm feeling reasonably optimistic about catching a good perch. It's quite hard to see the bites because of the wind. I've been struggling to get a little fish for bait, and I've been missing all the bites. I think they're teeny little bleak. And now I've just had a bite on the maggot, which feels quite a heavy fish. It could be a chub or a perch. Well, that makes a change. It's a roach. It's not what I wanted, and a decent-sized perch would probably eat that, but I don't really want to put a bait on that big because almost certainly a pike would take it. Let's carry on, see if we can get a bleak. Well, I've had a few casts just to get a bit of bait down on this wall opposite me. I've just had a bite actually and I've got a small fish on now. It's not a bad sign because when you're trying to get perch into the area, and this is a small perch, if you can attract the smaller fish to your bait, it isn't long before the big perch are attracted into the swim because they're highly predatory. They're quite fond of eating their own kind. They're real cannibals. And a little perch like this would be quite vulnerable when his mum and dad are around. So. That's not a bad start. <laughs> At least I've caught a perch anyway. Lovely little fish, isn't it? Perfect. Well, I've caught a perch. I don't think it's going to threaten the record, though, do you? Bit bigger. It's a nice golden coloured fish, that one. I've lost it. Oh, there. Well, they're definitely getting bigger. That one's a fish of about 10 ounces, I suppose. Certainly a lot of fish in this river, mainly perch, it seems. We do need to find a way of selecting a bigger perch, and if I can catch a bleak and use that for bait, maybe that'll do the trick. And if I can't get one, I'm going to try lure fishing. There's lots of different lures that perch take, little jigs, plugs. So we've got quite a few options still open to us, and there's plenty of time to go yet. Well, so far, the plan's working. We started off with really small perch, and they are definitely getting bigger. Miss that one. I've started to miss a few bites now, and they could be bleak. And if you were fishing a match, it wouldn't take you long to build up a winning weight if you were catching fish like this. Well, that makes a change. It's a roach. Literally a, a bite every cast. Well, this river is absolutely riddled with perch. Ooh, he's going for the wall. Well, I've just put on a small perch for bait. I tried to get a bleak, I couldn't get one, so I'll put a perch on and uh, big perch will eat small perch, but I'm not so sure this is a perch. The way it's motoring up and then it could be a pike, actually. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd be very surprised if this was a perch. It's really going away. It's a pike. It's not what we want, but I'm not going to complain. Just in case I got a pike, I did put a wire trace on. You should always do that if you use a live fish or any sort of fish for bait. Oh, he's in that time. Oh, there he is. Let's get him over onto this soft grass and have a look at him. There it is, a lovely summer pike. I should imagine the Thames has got lots of pike like this in it. Lovely sleek fish. Well, we mustn't get distracted. We don't want this to turn into a pike hunt. We'd better concentrate on what we set out to do. I shall just have to come back another day to catch some more of these. There he goes. Just help him on his way a bit. Go on, off you go. Cool. Well, this feels a better fish again, this one. Nice, solid feel to it on the strike. I can feel the fish shaking its head. And it just goes to show, as the bait starts to go through the swim, you create that activity, you draw the small fish in first, the bigger fish get attracted by all of the activity and the disturbance. Oh, it's a chub. <laughs> I thought it was a perch. There's a chub got in on the action. But it just goes to show what a great river the Thames is, actually. It's full of fish, you know. A lot of people tend to think of it as being a dirty and polluted river, but all of that's out of the way now. The Thames is a river with a, a great head of fish. That's an immaculate chub. Really lovely looking chub. It's got really nice, clean fins, very dark edge to them. It's a bit of a bonus, that, actually. I know we're not here to fish for chub, but it's a nice fish to catch. There he goes. Well, it's nearly the end of the day and we've caught lots of fish, but not the ones we're after. We've caught plenty of perch, but quite small ones. I didn't get the bleak I wanted for bait, but I did get some other fish for bait. I got some little gudgeon. I've got one of them out at the moment. See how it goes as we go into the fading light. But if this doesn't work, if we don't get a big perch now, then there's always tomorrow. And I think we'll go in another part of the river. Perhaps try the live bait tactics again and possibly a bit of lure fishing. I'm looking forward to it anyway. <laughs> well, right at the very end of the day, something's taken the gudgeon. And uh, I've waited about four hours, and I can see what it is. It's, it's the teeniest little pike you're ever likely to catch. And there it is, and it, you can see the gudgeon still on, it, on the end of its lip. I don't really need the landing net, but uh, I just want to get it out to have a look at it. Right, let's bring it round here. There's the gudgeon that we use for bait, and there's the little pike that took it. And it's a good job we were using a wire trace, because if you don't use a wire trace when you're using a fish bait, the pike's certainly to bite through the line. Well, it was a bit of fun to end the day, only a teeny little pike, but I'm going to put it back safely because that little one there could probably grow 15, 20 pounds maybe in the future. Nice end to the day, don't you think? Now today we've gone for a change of tactics and I think it's going to pay off. It's also a very good perch fishing day, absolutely perfect in fact at the moment because what we've got is lots of cloud cover but diffused light and I think that's perfect for perch. Actually it's quite interesting this because if you look at the sky behind me you'll notice these clouds are really bunched up. That's what I call a mackerel sky and it always denotes that there's a weather change coming so this cloud cover may not last all day but while it's here I think we've got a good chance. Tactically we're going to step up a gear. We're going to start to fish more swims and try and find these bigger perch. I'm going to start off down at this bottom end of the fishery here, fishing with a worm, and I'm going to try that in perhaps two or three spots. Mick's going to fish with lures, moving from swim to swim, trying to locate the bigger perch. And if we do, then obviously we'll spend some time in those swims. But we've got to up the stakes today because although we caught a lot of perch yesterday, we didn't get the bigger. Well, yesterday I only produced small fish to the maggot and the worm tactics, but I'm going to have to have a different approach today, I think, if I want to catch a bigger perch. Now, the perch are very, very predatory, as everybody knows, and what I'm going to use is lure fishing tactics. I've got quite a good selection of lures here. They're all lures that I've caught perch on in the past, and I'm very confident with them. 
we can start fishing near the surface, for example, with these shallow diving plugs. These will just go down a couple of feet. Perch will come up to that sort of depth, but I'm a bit worried it might be a bit too bright for that. So I've got other plugs with bigger lips, and these will crank down seven, eight, nine, ten feet if necessary. And then if that doesn't work, I shall try a spinner. Now, a spinner's a great lure. It sinks, and you can work it through all the different layers of water. I can work that under the surface, mid-water, right down near the bottom if necessary. And then, if those three tactics don't work, I've got one more trick up my sleeve, and that's to use a jig. Now, jigs are my favourite methods for catching perch. When they won't come up from the bottom, when they stay down there, you can actually bounce these along the bottom. If the perch refuse to come up for a bait, this one will go down to them. So we've got quite a few different lure tactics to choose from, and I think I'm going to get on with it now, because I am concerned that the weather's going to get worse. got a perch, but uh, this is the problem. It's not a particularly big fish. Real bait-robbing little devils, these are. The sun's now coming out and the conditions are deteriorating rapidly. It's gone from being superb perch conditions for about 15 minutes to absolutely the worst. You really don't want bright sunlight when you're perch fishing, especially when the water is as clear as it is at the moment. It's very, very clear. This could be hard. I we'll get one or two of these during the, during the day if it stays like this. I don't mind, of course, but uh, I prefer to catch a big perch. Well, I've just connected with a very delicate bite and the rod's just hooped over. I thought I was snagged up at first. If this is a perch, it's a really, really big one. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's a tench. This is incredible. A river tench. It's a male fish, actually. You can tell that by the size of its fins. It's a lovely looking thing, but not what we're after. Mix in. Right in my swim, you poacher. Not any matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could quite happily catch these all day long, but as much fun as this is, I've got to think perch. Got something on here. It must be another tench. In fact, what I've got on is a stone. <laughs> I've really hit rock bottom now. Float's gone again, I think. Yeah. You having any more bites? Yeah, I just missed one. Well, we've just fished through the witching hour when perch come out to feed. When the light levels drop low like this, they emerge from the cover and they go on the hunt. But we're not going to catch. There's nothing happening here. We've caught lots of small fish again, but no big ones. It's very frustrating. I think maybe tomorrow, it's our last shot at it, we've probably got to come up with a new game plan because this one just isn't working. Look at this, Mick. Yeah. Well, folks, we've had a right old touch at the 11th hour. We've made some phone calls to the Environment Agency and they've come up trumps. They're going to let us fish this Thames Weir pool. It's got everything we've been looking for. It's got flow, it's got cover. We're sure it's got fish. Now it's down to the weather. Will the bright conditions put them off or will we catch one? We'll have to see. This is amazing, just watch this. You've seen piranhas on the telly, but I bet you didn't realise they're in the Thames as well. Now these fish actually aren't piranhas, of course. It's a species of fish called bleak, but this tiny little fish is right at the bottom of the food chain. And it's very difficult for me and Mick to compete with this because any self-respecting perch has got as much food as he wants there. These fish feed the perch, the chub, the pike, and no wonder the Thames is producing specimen fish. It's just alive with them down there. They're boiling all over the surface. I know what this is, it's a pike. I just can't seem to get away from him. I 
just tried a new jig and uh, a pike's just hit it and it's quite a nice looking one actually. Quite a decent size. I think she's beat now though. Yes. Oh, that is a lovely fish. Well, she's still really, really lively because I got her in quite quick. I'm using quite strong tackle. Oh, the jig just fell out. Let's have a quick look at the fish. It's a cracking pike. It's got a, an unusual dorsal fin. It's got a piece missing. And it looks like it's actually been like that from when it was born. You certainly know that one again. Something else quite interesting, it's, it's trailing a length of line here and it's got a couple of maggots on it. Well, there's some angler probably watching this film today who was fishing the weir at the same time as us and he didn't realise what he hooked. Well, on your two maggots, that's what you hooked. A lovely big Thames pike, nicely into double figures. I'm sorry you didn't land it, but I landed it for you. Well, before I slip her back, I'll just show you the lure I caught her on. That was the lure she took. Now, this is what's known as a chubby shad. It's a fat-bodied rubber lure. But I did notice a lot of bleak was scattering, and I suspected that the pike here probably feed on bleak. And so what I've done, I've taken a Stanley knife, and I've just cut this lure down. I've sliced a big piece of rubber off the belly to make it a long, thin shape, just like the fish that it's probably feeding on. It seemed to work. Whether it was because or in spite of, I don't know, but uh, you can't argue with it. Clever devil, aren't I? <laughs> Well, this is it now, last gas saloon. We're about to enter that magical period when the light levels begin to drop. The sun's still very strong at the moment, but I'd say we've got about an hour and a half fishing, and if we don't catch a big perch, we've had it. I don't know how you rate our chances, Mick. I'm not very confident at all now. This light, it's really, really intense. It's hurting my eyes just to look downstream towards my flows, and um, the perch is a fish with very, very sensitive eyes. And I'm sure they're tucked away in some dark, quiet place at the moment. Yeah. Well, another 10 minutes, and I think it's going to be too dark for perch. They're not well known for feeding in dark, so I think we've literally blown it on this one. Still hope yet. Yeah, something's at it. Something's at it. This is my last chance. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's not the one I was after, but it's not a bad one. <laughs> oh, we're trying so hard to catch a big perch. And that's about as big as we're going to get this time, I think. Well, there it is. Not a particularly huge perch, but quite a nice one in my book. We've really, really tried hard to catch a big Thames perch for you, and it just hasn't happened this time, but it's a beautiful river, and you can be sure we're gonna be down this way sometime in the future. Maybe we'll get a bigger one. Well, mate. We had a real go, yeah. and uh, we didn't catch a big perch. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't be too despondent. I mean, I don't think we would have caught a big perch anywhere in these conditions, do you, mate? No, I don't. You've got high air pressure, bright sunshine, low clear water, and an easterly wind, and that is the kiss of death yeah. for big perch. I think we've fished really well, as well as at any time during this series, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. You can't say we didn't give it a good try. I mean, we've caught lots of really nice fish, haven't we? Yeah, we've but... had tench, we've had double-figure pike, we've had chub, yeah. we've had roach, we've had loads of perch. Yeah. It's just yeah. that in these conditions, yeah. the big ones are not going to feed. Yeah. You know it, I yeah. know it. But hopefully, everyone can see it's been proper fishing. We've yeah. had a great time. Yeah, it has. I don't like the look of this water, mate. It's very, very coloured, isn't it? Well, this is Grafham, mate. Big old sheet of water. Yeah, it's nice to be back, though. It's a lovely place to fish, isn't it? Windy old day, though, my boy. Yeah, look at the waves. <laughs> <laughs> look at the size of the water. Yeah. Well, here we are. This is Grafham Water in Cambridgeshire, famous, of course, as a trout reservoir. 
and we've come here today not to fish for trout. It's got a glorious past this place actually. It continues to be brilliant trout fishing today but it's also produced very good pike fishing in previous years. But that's started to change and the reason for that is there's a new predator on the block and that's the fish that we've primarily come to fish for. I'm talking of course about Xander and it's thought that here in Grafham there may well be a Xander of record proportions. There's certainly big perch, we know it contains a number of Xander but it's not going to be easy, I don't think, Mick. No, I mean, in the past, I think some people might have said we've taken on some fairly easy challenges, but this certainly isn't one. I defy anybody to come out here and catch a big Xander. But my prediction is that this water will probably produce a Xander to top the record in the next few years. It's certainly done doubles already, double figure fish, and I think there's much bigger out there. And that's why we've come out here, despite the conditions, despite these driving winds, despite wearing ridiculous, stupid hats, to come here and try and catch a really big Xander or maybe a really big perch. And I'll tell you, we've already talked about this. We know it's going to be difficult, but even if we blank, we're not going to give up. We're going to go for this and fish hard. Yeah, it's going to be interesting fishing, that's for sure. You can't beat a good challenge, can you? Indeed not, my boy. And at least we'll look cool in these Fortune hats. Fortune favours the brave, that's Sir Michael. Right. That's the most important thing. I hope it doesn't kick up rough later. That's right. it, Mick. I'll go and warm the engine up then. OK. Right, OK, mate. You got life insurance. Hold tight. Oh, me well, the boys. Well, no fish creates more controversy than the Xander, and I'm here at the Natural History Museum in London. I've got with me Nigel Hewlett, who works for the Environment Agency, and coincidentally is on the British Rod Court Fish Committee. This fish probably causes you a few headaches, the Xander, Nigel. Let's just look at the record for a moment, taking the controversy apart. There's been lots about that. Here we have a fish. The current record, incidentally, is just over 19 pounds, caught from Fenland. Is it going to get any bigger? Is it going to break 20? I certainly think so, Matt. If we look at fish on the continent, particularly in sort of Germany and Northern Europe, 30 pound fish and that, it's going to happen eventually. That's a phenomenal Xander, though. I know that they've got into one of the two of the trout reservoirs. Are those fish going to do it, do you think? Funnily enough, unlike pike, I don't think they will. I, I think Xander's key is getting lots of small fish. Its mouth is designed to eat small fish. That's one of the reasons why the Environment Agency and other bodies are concerned about its distribution in England and Wales. Now, it's interesting you should say that because I was then going to say to you, what would be your inside tip for the next record Xander? I think we've already seen the places it's going to come from. I think it'll be the fens. Well, I was hoping that Nigel would actually say one of the trout reservoirs because Mick and I have chosen to go to Grafham, which is a very large trout reservoir. It's got a reasonably low head of Xander, but you never know. You never know. Well, this is one of the most famous fishing areas on the whole of Grafham water. We're on one of the valve towers here. And in years gone by, there was a pipeline that extended from this valve tower to one over by the dam. And one day that pipeline developed a fracture and the water that was being pumped between the two towers began to explode up on the surface, almost like a giant jacuzzi. And that used to confuse the prey fish in the area and give the predators lots of cover to sneak up on those prey fish. And it became a real hot spot. Well, sadly, the pipe's since been repaired, but one of the things we still like about this area is the fact that the bottom here, along the course of the original pipeline, is still very uneven and broken up. So we've decided to start here Mick using jigging tactics this is a good area I think possibly for perch and maybe even for Xander yeah well in my experience on a lot of Xander waters Matt where you get an otherwise flat bottom as we have got in this area uh, if you find a little area punctuated with a lot of unevenness and troughs and little gullies they seem to be points that draw Xander in and, and they can be real Xander hotspots what we're going to do is we're going to fish with jigs rubber baits and we're going to fish them quite near to the bottom the water is very coloured it's going to be difficult for the fish to see the lure, so we'll probably use fairly bright colours. But we're more relying on the fish's ability through its lateral line to sense the vibration of the lures in the water. And uh, it could be a long, hard haul, this, to find some fish. But we're basically going to adopt this tactic of anchoring up in a likely spot, fishing with rubber jigs and then moving to another one. So we might as well give it a go, Mick, I think. Yeah, let's get on with it. I've got uh, 23 foot on the echo sound there. The prey fish are about five or six foot off bottom. Are they? A few stones and things on the bottom. Right, I'll fish the bottom. I'm going to wind up about five foot now and try off bottom. There could be pike, perch, 
maybe even the Xander will come up that far. And we've got to repeat that process over and over again in lots of different areas till we find some fish. Oh, so that trout come for that then? No, no. <laughs> he just flew out the water at it. Honestly, mate, it was amazing. <laughs> well, I've got nothing under the boat. What is a fish, Mick? You in? Yeah. It doesn't feel like a Z, though. It's not pulling very hard. I think it must be a perch. I can't think of what else it'd be. Yeah, it is. No, it is. It's a good one, mate. Oh. I didn't think it was a Xander. Hang on a minute. Hang on, he's just shaking his head. I think he's well hooked. Oh, great. Poor mate, that's a good one. It's not a bad perch no. at all, is it? Let's have a look at it. I'll tell you what, Nick, uh, that's what? a good fish. Yeah. Have a look at that spinnerbait. The got size on. of the lure it's taken. <laughs> I reckon that's two pounds, you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Look how thick it is. Yeah, very fat fish. That's a nice start. Superb. Isn't it? The way it's sticking its fin up as well. Well, just before you had that, I had a, I had a bite on the jig, and uh, I think we might be onto a shoal of perch here because there's a lot of fry showing on the fish finder. Yeah. It's a blooming great big lure, but of course, these fish in here are highly predatory. That's a nice graph and perch. The colours are very washed out at this time of year, um, predominantly because of this colour in the water. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the fish is quite pale. It's interesting that we, we've we had nothing on the jig, so I, I thought I'd just had a little tap earlier on, but you put that spinner bait on, and straight away you had a bite. Yeah. And I think in this coloured water, it's that extra vibration that that big blade gives, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big lure. Yeah. Well, I reckon this fish is just about ready to go back. A lovely perch. Nice one. I'm pleased about that, because the fishing's hard today. Look at that spiny old dorsal there, look. Lovely fish. There he goes. There he goes. Seems as soon as you drop down from about 14, they seem to be in that slightly deeper water. Yeah. What depth are we in here? Well, we're anchored in uh, 18 now. We've and there's fish under the boat, it's stacked high. Really? There should be some predators in the area. Well, let's hope so. Feeling confident here. I think we might get a Xander. That sky's fantastic. I don't know about you, but I've just had enough today. Well, the weather certainly improved this afternoon. The wind died down a little bit. The colour was still in the water, though, of course, and uh, I think it's fair to say we had a right old hoofing. We've had a nice perch, so I guess that's a good start. We've got the hole of tomorrow. I think probably the problem is that we haven't found the fish yet. And even if we did, maybe we're not even fishing the right method. There's so many variables in this game. But it was hard work, Mick, wasn't it? Yeah, but to be fair, though, we, we did cover a lot of water, didn't we? We covered all the likely spots and one or two others, tried a lot of different lures, but it just wasn't happening. Maybe the colour in the water is the, the key factor. But tomorrow's another day. Let's hope the forecast's a bit better and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Amazing sunset, incredible colours. Well, yesterday, Mick, it was a difficult day, really, but today looks different. Yeah, it was a difficult day, but I think we learned a few things, didn't we? I mean, we, we located a couple of areas where there were fish, and I think we've got to narrow the search now. Instead of trying to cover a lot of water, we've got to concentrate on a small bit of water that we think has potential. So we're going to be fishing in water ranging from about 14 to 20 feet deep, down a slope over on the North Shore, which is where we got the perch yesterday. We've also really come to the conclusion that in terms of presenting our lures, we need to present lures quite tight to the bottom. And there are roughly three types of lures you can use to catch these fish, and we've got examples of them here. You've got plugs, you've got plastic baits, and you've got these things called spinner baits. Um, the sort of plugs that you want for Xander fishing, especially in these conditions, are deep divers, because you want your lure to be down near or bumping the bottom. And that means using a lure with a big meaty vein like this one. I think it is important that we do stress that Xander are a species that do, most of the time, feed very, very close to the bottom. You come two, three foot off the bottom and chances are they won't come up and strike at the baits. Maybe after dark, in the middle of the night, they'll come up in the water, but most of the time you've got to get that bait right down on the deck. Yeah. 
And one of the best baits for the job really is a jig. Got all different shapes and colors, but effectively you've got a fish shape here, what we call a shad type bait. This one's what we call a twin tail, and this one's a plastic worm. Now these have got weighted jig heads. They dive very quickly down towards the bottom, and you can fish at controlled depths with these lures, can't you, Mick? Work them either on the bottom or just off. Yeah, that's right, and, and one of the most important things about this style of fishing is keeping a tight line to the jig because the zander's gonna just nip onto it and it's very, very delicate, and you've gotta concentrate all the time to feel for that gentle little pluck when they take it. And then finally, we've got spinner baits. Now, these things really are peculiar. This is what I caught a fish on yesterday. It looks a bit like a coat hanger, really. This one I've dressed with a plastic worm on the tail to give it a little bit more attraction. You've got a weighted jig head here. You've got a spinning blade here. Some of them have got two blades or even three blades. So with these three types of lures, we've pretty much got it covered. It now comes down to trying to narrow that search down into a much, much tighter area and to work the water more methodically. So that's what we're going to do. This isn't the church bay, it's around the corner. There's a lot of fish marking on the bottom. When we get to the shallower part, I'm actually bumping bottom with it. Yeah. You in? Yeah. Actually, it's, it's, a, not there, it's a perch. Well, it's only 12 foot here. I didn't think we'd get one here. <laughs> well, look at that for a greedy perch, man. He's ambitious, to say the least. It's a perch probably about a pound and a quarter, and it seized this huge plug. Well, it's interesting because we found a shallow plateau out here, Mick, and we picked up a fish. I have actually caught a Xander at Grapham on one of these in the past. Have you? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I had one about seven pound on one of these. Oh, there you go. Don't take the jig, guy. That's a lovely fish. Ooh -hoo. <laughs> Just look at that. It's an absolutely classic example of a perch. It's got those dark vertical stripes, beautiful spiky dorsal fin, and then that great big mouth. Pity anything that enters that. Well, we haven't caught the Zandy yet, but uh, we've had some lovely Real perch. Real lovely fish, yeah. that is. Just let him go. The thing is, if we carry on like this, we might get a three-pounder. The technique that we're practicing now is called vertical jigging, whereby we let the lures down directly below the boat. The flat, calm conditions that we've now got enable us to do this. And we're trying to fish as precisely as we can because things are starting to get desperate now. We've done okay with the perch, but we literally can't catch these Xander. Actually, it's very interesting fishing this is. Well, those Xander have eluded us. We've tried all sorts of methods. We've fished with plugs, we've fished the plastic baits, we've fished with spinner baits. We've really combed the water methodically and we haven't come up with anything. Now, my gut feeling is that the Xander are night feeding at the moment. They are a nocturnal species anyway, don't forget. And we've had a chat about this and we think maybe our best bet for a Xander might be to go to a river and fish it at night. So that's the idea, Mick, isn't it? No, I think you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm pretty convinced myself these Xander are feeding at night. And even if we stayed another two or three days, I don't think we'd catch them. And of course, we've got to be off the water now anyway, so we can't stay into the darkness. But I do like your idea of going on a river. Yeah, well, what we're going to do is we're going to gear up to fish late afternoon and into the night. It's our last chance for a Xander, so... Time's run out, so let's head for that river. Yeah, let's okay. go. Well, here we are on a very cold River Avon. You'll recall that for the past two days we've been fishing graph and water, and we tried a lot of different techniques to try and locate the Xander. Um, we caught some nice perch using spinner baits and also plugs. But those Xander, well, they eluded us. Now, we tried really combing the water. We used the spinner baits, we used the plugs, and we also tried jigging for the Xander, just literally bouncing the lures off the bottom, fishing really deep and slow. We covered a lot of areas, but we couldn't get a bite. Now, Mick and I came to the conclusion that in actual fact that the fish are night feeding at the moment. It's a fairly commonplace thing at this time of year, and that's why Mick is carrying out these modifications to our floats. Now, what we're going to be using is dead baits, but we need some form of bite indication. So the idea is that by modifying the floats in this way, we can put night lights or isotopes into the float, and that will tell us when we've got a bite. 
size. And if this works, it's really, really exciting because what actually happens is your float's sitting out there on the surface, but in the blackness, all you can see are these little pinpricks of light. And if we get a bite, what should happen is the float will start to move, the night lights will start to jiggle around and maybe just drift off across the surface. Really exciting stuff. Let's just hope that it works and then we get our Xander. We've only got a few hours to do it. How are you getting on, mate? Very well, mate. I'm really ready. Good lad. Oh, Mick and Nick. Mm. The weather's really changed. Could be a cold night. What's ready? Really? Just trying to see if I can pick up any fish on the echo sound of Nick. How are you doing so far? Pretty poor, actually. I haven't seen much. You got one, mate? Yep. Yeah, I've got a fish, Mick. Oh, it's not big. Feels yeah. like a little pike or a perch or something. Yeah. Oh, it's not a bad pike. It's not a bad one, actually. No, it's a small pike. It's been grabbed by a big one. Look yeah. at that, Mick. He's got oh, it again. Yeah. Look at that. He's got it again. Look at this. Keep, keep very quiet. Keep very quiet. Oh, look look at that. I saw that, yeah. Here he comes. He's there. He's got it again. Well, I better take that little pike out of the way, Mick, otherwise he's... Uh... Whew. Well, that little fella oh. had a really... I'll tell you what. Narrow I'll... squeak there. Mick's going to try and catch that <laughs> bigger fish now. But <laughs> oh, he's in a mess. You can see where the other pike attacked him. Look, just on the back edge there. He'll be all right, though. They're tough fish. The bigger pike in this place do feed on the small pike. They're a prime food source for them. So what you saw there is something that goes on on a daily basis. But you're one lucky little pike. <laughs> Tiny pike. Micro pike. Really? Yeah, I think so. I'm... Got myself into a nice fish here, or certainly a lot bigger than the other one. We don't know whether it's the pike that attacked that little jack pike, but it feels a lot better, Mick. It feels a much better fish, this one. Yeah. It's not a bad pike, yeah, it's not, it's but nice it's one. not the monster from the deeps. Oh, oh he's just trying to look. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think that was the big one. No, no. No. He's around here somewhere, though. Yeah. Keep casting. Yeah. Another 10 minutes? Yeah, we'll keep okay. going, mate. Superb cover under the boat. You'll find a lot of pike will be hiding underneath them. It's beautiful clear water here on the river at the moment. Very clear. If you just look here at this lure, if I just drag it along the surface, you'll see how clear it is. It's wonderful visibility. I think I might try spinnerbait now. That yeah. could, could work well in this clear water. I'll get us up, up river. We can keep working down all there. Right. All right. That's all ready. Good place for Xander there. It is a good place. Yeah, I'm at. I've got one on the super shed now. Certainly changing to the bigger lures. It's started to produce some bites. Here it comes. It must be bigger than I thought, mate. Yeah, it's a double that is, I think, matey. You want me to chin it, Mick? I think he's only very, very lightly hooked, oh, actually. Oh, he's just about hanging on. Oh! oh he's just giving me a soak in as well. I can't <laughs> believe this. <laughs> I can't believe this. It's a comedy of errors, this is. I don't know that I've got the bottom here, mate. Just cranking this thunder stick in. Well, and, surely uh, it's not... You weren't bumping the bottom with the lure, were you? Sometimes Xander are a bit sluggish, you know. No, I think it's just a small fish and it's just not fighting. <laughs> it's just coming. Oh, it's a little, oh, I can see what's happened. It's a little pike and I somehow hooked it under the chin. Ah. <laughs> Aren't we having a strange day? Sort yeah. Of all, you get days like this, don't you, when funny things happen? You have hooked him in an odd place. I know. See if I can... Oh, I Ooh, yeah. Little micro pike. I knew he'd do that. Oh, he's thin, isn't he? Yeah. Well, we've lost a couple. We've landed a couple of tiddlers, and now he's pouring down a rain. Anyway, it's starting to get darker now, so maybe the sander might start to come on. Here he goes. Ooh. He's gone. Down here, if you get ready with the anchor, that here's good. That should do it there. OK. Well, there we go. One dead bait. Xander will be hunting in the dark by smell, so I've cut the head off and that'll let a bit more of the uh, juice out and uh, give us the best chance of them finding it. They're not the best baits, Mick. We haven't had time to get fresh bait. No. And... It's starting to get dark, Matt. Shall we uh, make the first cast? Yep. Well, the way the wind's going, the starlight should be facing towards us, so we, we should see all right. Just a bit worried about those baits, you know. Well, we've just dropped anchor now into our position for the night fishing. I'm a bit disappointed, actually, because we haven't caught a Zander yet, and I was hoping we might get one on a lure, or even in the previous spot we tried dead baiting in. 
We're also worried about the quality of the dead baits. It probably sounds like we're making excuses, but it's quite important with Xander to have very fresh bait, and the bait we've got is it's not the best, but in the circumstances, it's the best we could get. So anyway, we're going to give it a go here. We're going to anchor up um, for an hour or so at least, wait till it gets fully dark before we decide whether or not we're, uh, we're in the wrong place or not. Probably fish maybe for an hour into darkness, I think. And if we haven't caught one by then, I think we're in trouble. So we'll give it a go anyway. Well into the tube. Looks like it's just landed from out of space. Looking good. Perfect. I'm going to come just a bit outside you. Well, I think we've passed the prime time, really. We've been here quite a long time without a stir on the floats. The, the floats work brilliantly. It's oh, just, yeah. <laughs> there's no Xander there. No, yeah. I think technically we're doing it right, but I just think there's no feeding Xander in this area. Yeah. I think you've got to accept that, you know, when you're chasing big fish, a lot of the time it just doesn't work. It's been quite a long day, really, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, setting this off and it's come to nothing, really. It's uh, pretty grim, mate, I think, isn't it? I don't think it's going to happen. Well, Mick, we've had a Bob Owler, mate. We've come to the end of the road, my yeah. boy. Yeah. I mean, we, we just can't go on now. It's well into the night and uh, you've got to call an end to these things at some time, haven't you? I mean, we've tried really hard and, we, you know, it's been interesting and we've had some fun along the way, but uh, we haven't got a Xander, have we? No, the bell ringers are practising in the distance. It's well into the hours of darkness. The Xander are tucked up asleep under the bank somewhere, and me and Brownie are still sitting here like a pair of lunatics trying to catch one. But if we're honest, it doesn't look like it's going to happen, and I think even me and uh, Mick have got to admit defeat on this one. Sorry we didn't catch a Xander, but at least we got a couple of perch. That's fishing sometimes.